We are God. We look forward to another great week and another great time in the Lord <clears throat> as we go. Uh, and don't forget our new word for you today is they're in. They're in. Uh, there's a couple ways to get them. We can mail them to you. You send the email us your address or um, you can call the church and uh, we can set up a time to come by. We'll make sure that you receive your word for you today. Uh, so thank God for you and thank God for that. So we're going to open up our Bible study this morning with scripture and prayer. We're going to have a scripture by Brother Jim Kennedy and prayer uh, offered by Reverend Ken Parker. Reading Psalms 82. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will he judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hands of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All of the foundation of earth are out of course. I have said, ye are God and all of your children of the Most High, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Rise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. May blessing be to the reading and hearing of Psalms 82. Amen. Heavenly Father, once again, we come to you with a bow down, head and an open heart, praying this prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thanking you again, Lord, for blessing us with another day, Father God. Father God, we just acknowledge that you are God and God alone. We just want to say thank you, Father God, for bringing us along. Lord, we just want to say thank you, Father God, how you blessed us again when you woke us up, clothed in our right mind, Lord, able to just praise you and worship you and glorify you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for all that you do. Lord, we ask you to bless all of those that are watching uh, uh, this class on Facebook land here, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you touch them in a mighty way, Lord. We lift up our pastor to you, Father God, and ask, oh God, that you continue to give him the knowledge and the uh, wisdom, Father God, to uh, teach this class, Lord Jesus, and to know more about you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, how you're just blessing us again, Lord. We thank you for just uh, being a very close friend. Lord, forgive us of our sins when we uh, fall short, Lord. Lord, we just ask, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you give us an understanding and a revelation of what thus says the Lord as we study more of Romans, oh Lord, the fifth chapter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, and God bless. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. And uh, just to kind of recap some of the things we're talking about, um, we're talking about justification and how we are justified in Christ. Uh, how we are made righteous in Him. And how He loved us while we were yet unlovable to Him. And that's good news to know that we have a God that's, when He is, uh, when we treat him in an unlovable way. He continues to shed his love toward us. And so we give thanks to God for that type of God. Because this is not a because of love, it's an in spite of love, a godly type of love. Uh, and uh, talks about us being reconciled, we shall be saved uh, through the work of Christ. Not only so, in verse 11, not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now have received the atonement. Now, um, that word Because it goes back to the Old Testament, the 
the atonement, the reconciliation. Through whom now the reconciliation is the word. And so we receive the reconciliation, being reconciled back to God, being having a way, having to, to be able to reach uh, a holy God, being a sinful man. And so this, uh, that this what we receive is from Christ that we now might be righteous in God's sight and justified in, by his will and his way. Then they began to go into this contrast between the first Adam and the last Adam. And so in verse 12 it says, Wherefore, as by one man sinned, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And so, this one man, he's talking about, he's talking about Adam. He's talking about how Adam's life, way back in the garden, affect ours today, and affected our, affected our world, allowing the enemy to grab hold and, and run on in our lives. And so, one man, sin, entered the world. Um, he shows how Adam's disobedience, uh -huh. yeah. his disobedience uh, affected his descendants. Uh -huh. well, one thing you have to notice is that Adam and Eve sinned uh, before they had children. Right. You think this is not a crafty enemy. But before they had children, Adam and Eve sinned. Why would, why, would, why would that make a difference? Because if they would have had children before they had sinned, then the enemy would have to attack another generation. So since before they have children, they sin, and sin came death, you see the next generation, and, and this is kind of how our world goes. Uh, Adam and Eve disobeyed God by doing not doing what God had told them to do. And then they had children, Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel. Very next generation, murder. Disobedience to God, the next generation, murder. And so, uh, you know, after that, what can you expect? You've gone the full spectrum. And so everything in between led up to that murder. And so because of what Adam did in the, in the garden, it's, it still affects us today. And it says, as by one man sin entered the world, one person sin entered the world. A world without sin. And now one man changed all of that. And death by sin. So there's the spectrum. Sin entered. The wages of sin is what? Death. Amen. That don't change. So death passed unto all men. <laughs> it passed. It was passed to us. Sin was passed to us by one man. For until the law, <clears throat> sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Now again, this is referring to a Mosaic law and prior to Moses. Um, but yet, um, it, it, it does not 
It does not qualify a person or before that time or in between that time uh, that sin that they were without sin that they were not guilty of sin um, when it talks about here um, that sin was used also as a teacher and, you know, it's just like, if I'm not aware of a coming disaster, it does not mean that the coming disaster is not coming. And so he's not trying to justify the people in between Adam and uh, Moses or the coming of the law. What he's saying there is, is that because they had no concept of structure that Moses brought in the law through God, um, that the understanding was uh, that well, we can't sin can't be imputed to us because we don't have anything, you know, know the difference. What well, we even say today, ignorance of the law is no excuse. Uh, in the garden uh, God gave Adam uh, his penalty mm -hmm. for sin God was the law, is the law, is the law man mm -hmm. but he still it was imputed to him right. because of his disobedience mm -hmm. so again it's not justifying and, and, and because verse 13, 14 starts off, nevertheless Death reigned. Amen. Death reigned still. And we know the wages of sin is death. For uh, so really it's like not knowing the full truth or getting a structure or not understanding why this is like that or but even uh, Abraham, his faith. So there was a way. Wasn't like there wasn't a way. And wasn't like they didn't understand sin. Because God still pointed out from Adam all the way to Moses, unrighteousness, ungodliness, righteousness, all those things. Even over them that had not seen after a after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. A figure. And so this figure of one who is to come is the Christ figure. But Adam's sin pronounced death sentence, um, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, excuse me, chapter 15, verse 45, it says, And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So we, that's what he's talking about here. He, that's what he's talking about. Uh, this first Adam uh, that had uh, come and now the last Adam, which is Christ. Uh, so uh, the Bible lets us know that We go astray. All like sheep have gone astray, mm -hmm. knowing and transgressing God's law as they understood. And so, it, we have this sinful nature. 
And that's what he's talking about, the sinful nature that we could, could not shake off. And still to this day, even though we reconcile things uh, as dead, still, we call it that old man, that old Adam, wants to well up. And so it says that over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who was the figure of him, it's an outline, a sketch, the idea that I'm making contrasting outline of Christ. <clears throat> but then in verse 15, it says, but, now there's a transition statement there. I always like to see the word of God when it transitions. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. And so now he's talking about grace through the offense of one, many, or dead. And that's what it says, for it, through the offense of one, many be dead, much more. Amen. The grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abound unto many. And so here we see now this transitional statement into the other side of the spectrum where he says, uh, not as the offense. So he's saying there's one coming not to continue this uh, cycle of offenses, but as one coming with a free gift. Yeah. For through the offense, many be dead. Everybody. The wages, we'll talk about that later, going to 6, 23, for well, the wages of sin is death, we see that. And this, this is a almost a concluding statement, the wages of sin is death, death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, that's 6, 23. But he's showing us, he's showing this contrast, we're on the other side of the spectrum, much more, much more. All those people die mm -hmm. because of one man's sin much more. It, 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 still, it took a lot for Christ to overcome the offenses of mankind. Mm -hmm. So it was much more. And I'm glad it was much more. I'm glad that <clears throat> excuse me that he lets us know here uh, grace. <laughs> grace. Uh, the grace of God. The grace of God is much more than the uh, offense of sin. The grace of God is much more than uh, eternal Death. The grace of God is able is much more, much more than all the offenses that all have done throughout all hum humankind. And the gift of grace. Now, it's God's grace. It's God's grace. But it's a gift to us. Amen. Well, I like that right there. Yeah. And the gift by grace. Mm -hmm. So it was the grace of God, the gift by grace. He's showing, he's demonstrating his grace. 
which is by one name, mm -hmm, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Now, uh, I look back and I thought I saw that uh, before. Mm, okay. Hath abounded unto men. Now, look at the difference. In 12, it says, because of sin entered into the world, so death passed unto all men, for all have sinned. <clears throat> but he didn't say that everybody, that all have received this free gift, because even though the giver gives the free gift, you have to receive it, the free gift. And so not, and so he says, hath, hath, has abounded unto many. So it's a choice. We didn't have a choice to what Adam did, but we have a choice to how we end up. That's why it says me and not all. And not as if it was one that sinned, and not as it was by one that sinned, so it is the gift. So is the gift. So what he's saying there in that 16th verse, the free gift is not to be compared to the effect of one man's sin. The free gift is not to be compared to one man's sin. Uh, so there's no comparison. <laughs> uh, much more they which receive of the abundance of grace. You see, he says, even though all have sinned, much more, this free gift comes back up again. Much more. They which have which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in the life by one Jesus Christ. Right. He goes right into that. He goes for the jugular there. He says, uh, you know, sin is no comparison. Uh, though it was catastrophic, it was huge. It was worldwide. We had to label it as a virus virus that has been killing mankind from the beginning. An unsolvable. Science can't solve it. You can't throw money at it. Professional position don't solve it. It takes Christ to solve this one. When you're involved in circumstances of no hope, God came down and, and broke the stronghold. Sin's grip. Uh, has been broken. Now he concludes, therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. The wrath of God came unto all men through Adam, one man's disobedience to God, and throughout his lineage, which we are part of somewhere, somehow, uh, one blood, uh, one sin, uh, all of that, because of Adam's offenses. That 
condemnation, being condemned, period. <laughs> you, you don't have to do anything to be condemned. Right. You're condemned already. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and there's this whole big thing about age of accountability and what have you, what have you, but you know, I know that God forgives sin. I know that God is able to break uh, this curse of sin mm -hmm. his way. We're seeing the way that, and I'm not saying that Jesus is not another way, so don't get that twisted. What I'm saying is uh, God has the final say on who really, uh, and he already knows, but do you know? He's giving you the choice. He's giving you the opportunity. He's giving, that's what he's saying here. He's giving you the opportunity. So why? Because your judgment is already set. You're condemned. Like uh, somebody on death row whose date is set. Is, is, uh, is, uh, set. You're condemned. You're condemned already. Doesn't matter. When? So by one man's judgment came upon all men, all men. Even so, by the righteousness of one Christ, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Now, he's not saying that. He said that Christ came for all. He's not saying that all men are automatically justified. But you have the opportunity to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior and be justified. That's what he's saying. That gift is available to anyone. Amen. The contrast between Adam and Christ. Um, let me see here. In Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus went out, was led out by the Spirit to be tempted of the devil, He deal with a couple of things. In verse 4, uh, after his appetite, hungry. Then you see here where it says that um, the devil, the tempter came verse 3, 4, 3. The tempter came and to him and said, If thou be son of God, command these stones to be made great. Now, the tempter came. Don't miss that. He did not come to help uh, magnify God's uh, word. He didn't come to help uplift, praise the name of Jesus. He didn't come there. He came there to trip up the Savior of the world. And the first thing he said, if thou be the Son of God. Well, that's not a question. Right. You know, God has just said, thou, this is my Son, uh, whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. Amen. In uh, 317. But here we go. Appetite. What happened? Um, it, it looked good to eat. Look good. I'm, I'm a hunger for it. You have to be careful what you hunger for. Not only physically, but spiritually and mentally. God answered me. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So again, he was dealing with that uh, uh, sin, that Adamic sin there. Okay? Because he did not live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, they listened to the mouth of the serpent, the devil. Who's he? This is the one here. So, again, now, in the seventh verse, or did that six through, he takes you to a high place and said, man, if you jump down off this temple, whoo, think 
how many people could be saved. Pleasing. It's pleasing. You got one to be desired. Don't you, don't you desire that? Don't you want that? That, that mystical relationship would be so solid. People would have to uh, know that you're the son of God. He took him uh, to the top of the temple. The church. <laughs> the devil. And showed him. Said, man, if you do some great miracle here, boy, and I'm talking about jump down. Mm -hmm. The angels will take charge of you. Well, I think Jesus understood something then that uh, I know he was able to walk on water and do those things. But I never noticed him jumping down off anything, trying to, you know, be, um, <laughs> act like gravity didn't have an effect on him. You know what I'm saying? It'd be like I said, somebody said, man, if you jump off the Golden Gate Bridge, I, I guarantee you, man, you, the wind will catch you and you'll be all right. Are you willing to take that chance? So here's what Jesus said. It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So he gives us a word, number one, to use, but also he lets us know that as Eve was looking at it, you can see this all back in third chapter of Genesis. She looked upon it. She hungered for it. It delighted her eyes. And then finally, she took it. And look at it. And then this is just the final thing right here. It says in verse 9, and saith unto him. So he took him to a high mountain. Showed him all the kingdoms of the world. All the political systems of the world. And he said unto him. All these things I give unto thee. If thou bow down and worship me. If you take a bite of that apple. Your eyes will be open. And you will be like God. But yet he was God. So, he told Satan, Satan, you crazy. You need to get out of here. Uh, it is written, thou shalt, not, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So, that Adamic, he broke that Adamic sin right there. He started the breaking of it, really. I mean, it's like um, that, from that point, to the time he died and rose again. But it was that he had to break that endemic sin by the word of God. He didn't say, I'm the son of God. Boom, that's it. He just kept saying it is written. So, it is written. For by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. Verse 18, we'll go back to it. Even so, by righteousness of one man, the free gift came upon all men, and justification, we've been talking about justification, of life. For as by one man's disobedience, Adam, <clears throat> were made, many were made sinners. So by obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that offense Uh, that the offense might abound. But sin, but where sin abound, grace did much more abound. So what he said, when the law came, we recognize now. Man, the law, see, there's nothing wrong with the law. The law is holy. The law is from God. But it wasn't there so that we could follow it like that. It was there to show us and to teach us how holy we are and how, how holy God is and how sinful we are and the distance uh, between the two yes. and the difference. That's good. That's good. And so grace that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness 
unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Righteousness reign. Let righteousness reign by Jesus Christ. It came through Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus. Yes, Adam did what he did, but we have a Savior who broke the sin barrier that we now might have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Not eternal death or damnation or condemnation or judgment or wrath or all the other things. Much more grace, blessings, joy, peace, love, all of them. The uh, Galatians 5, uh, 20, fruit of the Spirit, and more. And so we'll stop right there. But what a mighty God we serve. Yes, Lord. Uh, man. I know this is a, if you read it again, you'll begin to see the flow of this scripture. It just, it just flows all the way to that point. Paul says, therefore. <laughs> now, I conclude. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your good gift of your grace. We thank you for being the grace that's in the gift. You gave your life on the cross that we might have life. You were obedient, though much more abound uh, in obedience. Through obedience, you shared it with us so that we are not condemned, but justified and righteous, counted as righteous in your sight. And so we give you all the praise and honor and glory, God, you so richly deserve. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. God bless you. Come on back for church. We'll be starting in about 15 minutes. God bless.